Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to save files from a remote server onto your local device and then use those files later in the application cycle for Android and iOS using Ionic Framework. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and create your project. So after we create our project, let's let's go into it. And then let's go ahead and add the Android platform. Now if I were on a Mac, I could also add the iOS platform, but since I'm running on Ubuntu Linux, I have to only add Android. But note that this tutorial does work for iOS as well. So with that done, we're going to need to add the Apache Cordova plugin responsible for handling files. So I've gone ahead and opened that already in my web browser. And I'm going to share this in my written uh, blog. It's going to have all the links so that way it's easy for you to obtain. So we're going to go ahead and add the file transfer plugin from Cordova. And with that added, that's good. So let's go ahead and open up our project. So navigate to your JS folder and then your app JS. We're going to do all of our work in there. So to start things off, let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit so that way it makes it easiest, easier for us to use. And we're going to go ahead and create a controller, which is going to handle all of this, all of our file stuff. Alright, now that we've got this controller made, we're going to focus on uh, two functions. We're going to focus on a download function and a load function. So let's go ahead and, and declare those. And as you can probably guess, the download function is going to download the file from a remote server and save it on our device, and the load function is going to load that file uh, from our device. Uh, to display on the screen. So to start things off, let's go ahead and work with the download function. So we're going to always start stuff off with ionic loading and then we're going to show it because we want to know progress updates as they happen. Otherwise, we don't know if the app is frozen or, or what's going on. So let's go ahead and say loading. And that will just show a loading prompt. Up next, we actually want to request the file system before we can actually start using it. And that can be done by going like this, using the request file system command. So if it succeeded, it's going to use the um, callback for the file system. It's going to do our success callback, and if it, if it failed, we don't, we don't really care. We're not going to do a, a callback for that. So now that we've retrieved the file system, we can actually start using it. So let's go to the root, and we're actually going to get a directory. Because we don't want to save everything at the root of the file system. That's just poor practice for app development. So what this get directory command takes is it takes a set of options. In, in uh, our case, we're going to say create equals true. Because if the directory does not exist, we're going to go ahead and create it. Next, it's going to take a um, success callback.
and then um, if if we wanted to, we can create a um, an error an error callback, but we're we're not going to again in this in this situation. So in our success callback, the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the file. Uh, we need to prepare file space for the download. So to do that, we're going to do uh, we're going to use our directory entry that we just retrieved. We're going to say git file, and then we're going to supply it with a list of list of commands. So the first command is our file name, which we're going to prepare. So it's going to be test.png. That's what we're going to save it as. The next set of commands are options, and we're going to say create equals true and exclusive equals false. The next thing that we do is we create our success callback. And after that we can go ahead and create our fail callback. All right. So in our file entry callback, that was a success. We're going to go ahead and get the uh, Cordova interpretation of that path. So we can do that by going and doing file entry to URL, and that'll get the Cordova interpretation of it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the file if it exists because we want to get the fresh file. You don't have to do this if you plan on only downloading unique files. All right, now this is where we actually start doing transfers. So now that we've got our file space set up, we can actually start the transfer. So we're going to do file transfer equals new file transfer. And we're going to say FT download and We're going to supply a URL. Now, I don't have um, a URL offhand, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Google. And I'm just going to get this image, for example. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Oh, that's not what we want. Let's see if this works out better for us. No. Ah, copy image location I think is what we wanted. Yeah, much better. So we're going to download this file and store it on our device. Um, the next parameter that we want is we want the path that we're going to store it at, which we defined as p. We are going to make a callback function which happens on success. We're going to create a function for error. And then these are other, other parameters which we won't mess with for this tutorial. Alright, so first let's go ahead and worry about our error. We're just going to do ionic loading hide and we're going to say that it failed. Alright, for our success, uh, this is where the magic could happen here. So we're going to do ionic loading dot hide because we're going to hide the loading bar. And we're going to return the scope um, of the actual file path. Now, this scope is an actual file that we can we can use um, in our front end so if we wanted to use HTML image uh, tag we can just put in this image file so let's go ahead and save this and for purposes let's go ahead and see if it works in our app so going 
Here, let's go ahead and do Ionic build Android. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself here. We forgot to actually add it to the front, hand, front end. So let's go ahead and go back and open up the index.html file. Now we can do ng controller equals file controller. Let's go ahead and add a button. We are going to display our path. And we're going to display our image. You'll notice that I use ng source instead of source. That's because source will get uh, errors if you try to use these curly brackets. So ng source allows curly brackets. So now that we've got some stuff on our front end, now we can actually go try to build it. And then let's go ahead and try to install it. We're going to open it. And we've got an error somewhere because it's not rendering our um, application correctly. So the, there were actually two errors that were preventing it from rendering correctly on the device. The first error was that I didn't name a directory to be created or used for our downloaded file. I went ahead and added that. The second problem was I had an extra bracket in there, mm -hmm. uh, which I've gone ahead and removed. So with that, with those two things corrected, let's go ahead and try to run it. Let's build it. And then let's go ahead and install it. So on the device, we now have a button. When we click that button, what it does is it go ahead and it, it lists where the file was saved at according to how Apache Cordova likes it and then it displays the image on the screen and we can trust that this image is is saved because we're gonna go ahead and now and pretty much reproduce the same steps but instead of downloading we're just gonna load from the file system so let's go ahead and go back into our code and we're gonna start the load process. So start things off by, of course, uh, using the ionic loading. So that way no one guesses on why we're waiting around. Then we're going to go ahead and request the file system again. And uh, so actually to sum things up, let's just go ahead and copy and paste the code that we have. So that way it saves us a lot of typing. We're, we're just going to strip away uh, the stuff that we don't want. So now that we've gone ahead and copied and pasted, let's go ahead and remove the code for uh, downloading. We don't want it. we're also going to remove the, the remove code. So now that our file entry was successful, we're going to do ionic loading.hide. And then we're going to do scope.image file. All right. With that said and done, let's go back to our HTML file. We're going to add another button. Oops. 
All right, with that added, let's go ahead and, and build and run again. So open up our app, and we've got to download and load. So we can go ahead and let's hopefully trust that our downloaded file is still there. So let's go ahead and click load. And nothing happened. So let's go ahead and download it just in case it got messed up in the reinstall. So I exit out of that. And we're going to load it. Of course, nothing happens because there's another bug somewhere. So let's go back into our code. So the reason why the load button didn't work this time was because I had made a, a typo in my ng click. So now that I've fixed the typo, let's go ahead and try building it again. And let's install it. We're going to open it. And then we're going to just hit load. And we don't have any code in there for downloading. So this file was loaded from our device's file system. So you can get a lot more creative with um, the code that's here. This is just bare bones examples on, on how to download and use the file system. Um, but you can you can get much more creative and this this tutorial works for iOS too it's not just Android I just don't have a, a Mac right now to install this on if you like this video and are interested in seeing what else I have to offer please subscribe to my channel as well as my written web blog thank you